show you what we're doing because I want you guys to get out of here and enjoy this what I do is a, I use a number of rigs 20 pound 7 strand right there and I'll go over the rig and how I tie that rig but that is probably our most productive rig next we've got one over here we're using number six hooks with 30 pound 7 strand and that one also does great as well depending on that knot you got to get that all bright knot tied and you've got to take your time and again I'll go over all that with you and then also this rig now this is 32 pound straight wire with a swivel and I've got an 80 pound spro swivel on there a great little low profile swivel doesn't show up as much and our number one key out here what we're with what we're doing is we are trying to make our rigs as small and as less defined as we can and you'll see we got some charter boats. That's our good buddies from Outlaw Charters next to us. That's Renegade, the boat Renegade over there. And then we've got Justin in front of us right there. And we got Captain Sprinkles coming in, rolling in right there from offshore. And uh, there's our bait well full of bait, lots of mullet. That is the key. A lot of people lose their patience. A lot of people don't want to spend the time that it takes to catch enough bait to do this and be successful. Now I'm going to get the drone up, we're going to look and try and get some great video of these fish in the air feeding. Um, it's awesome. I think that's what make this, makes this more, more enticing, doesn't it, Tony? Yes, it does. Yeah, I think it makes it more enticing and more exciting. And honestly, it, the days where you don't catch many fish, if you can get them doing their aerials, it's worth it. But I want to tell you, I stopped into Perry's Bait and Tackle, and I picked this up. Bait and Charm Bat. Now... It may have cost a little bit more than a whipple ball, whipple ball bat, but I'm going to tell you, I've done it with whipple ball bats. They bend, they break, they slip out your hand. This has got a great grip, heavy, sturdy, and down in there, you know, you can sling it. Now, for some people like Captain Jason Bird, it's a great shot. <laughs> it's a great uh, tool to use to do a uh, shot of beer if you want to out of it. But for us, we're using it to chum today. And we're going to get on these Spanish. We're at Paradise Reef here in Merle's Inlet. And again, we're in my 230 Bay Reef. Great boat for doing this. We pick and choose your days. And first, you're not going to come try this on a rough day. You want it on a calm day. This is just enough ripple, really. I think what it does is helps disguise our baits uh, even more than what our low-profile rigs do. And I'll show you real quick. We've already got a couple fish in the bag up here in our buffalo gear bag. And I'll tell you, for a value... For a great value, if you're looking for a fish bag, go check out the Buffalo Gear bags. I'll tell you, I've got a couple I, I bought this week, and they are awesome. So go check them out, and go to marshallsmarine.com to check out these 230 baits or 250 bait, a new Not Mine 10 that we've got coming. And we're going to get back on some fish here. I need to check my bait because the key, another key, and I'll talk about it as we go on, another key is that that bait has to stay on top. Tony? That's probably the most important, crucial part of a good bait. 100%. It's got to stay on top. So we're going to get on top of it and get a fresh bait on, and we'll come back on the other side of this. Let's hope we have a fish on.
scoop him. Yep. All right. Hooked up again. I'll tell you what, it doesn't matter if you get to do, go to do something else. And I was getting ready to rig up my beat down, put my beat down rig on and get the live scope set up. So I'm going to show you exactly what we can see with that live scope. And you'll be amazed. You'll be amazed at how we can see these Spanish out here. All right. Don't get in my partner's line. Don't get in my partner's line. We're going to have to come to this side. I'm on to you. We're good. We're good, buddy. Here, he is right here. Perfect bait. Perfect king size bait. All right. Let's don't jinx us. All right. Hear that drag? I got it set really loose for a reason. I'm becoming an expert at uh, netting the fish and fighting it at the same time. Well, I, I say I'm an expert. Not an expert. I'm just doing it a lot. And that's a good problem. All right. Here we go. Come on. Swim this way. Oh, you know, you did not just swim right over my bait, over my net. Come on. Oh, come on. There we go. There we go. All right. And look, that's what I'm talking about. That's why we fight with loose drag. Look at how easy that hook came out. Let me get it out of that net. There. Pull up here closely, I'll show you. Look how small that six is. And that is a great size hook, especially with the baits we're using and what they're hitting. And that one right there, that one right there may be going to a dinner table. That one may go to a dinner table, not to a king rig, we'll see. We'll see, but I tell you what, a great time. I'm gonna get that live scope set up so y'all can see these fish when they get up feeding behind the boat. And uh, look, he's spitting up mullet. All right, All right get him on ice. Back to putting on our lab scope, our Garmin Panoptix lab scope, and this bracket from Beat Down Outdoors has been incredible. You know, we had some issues with some salt corrosion early on, but I tell you, I'm using Boeing's Bow Shield and got it on everything. As you can see now, look, there's no signs of corrosion on any of those. So it's working great. Now, real quick, Scotty Hopkins over at Marshall's Marine, we came and chose this setup that we've got. I've got the bracket right here. We're going to slide this beat down bracket in and we'll get it in there. It's seated. Tighten all these down because you do not want to lose. This is not inexpensive. This is a very good and effective choice in brackets. And then what we do here, I've got my Garmin rigged up on the console there. We've got our wire coming under, under the gunnel. And then watch how simple this is. I mean, it doesn't get much more easier than that. And when I say idiot proof, I'm talking about me. So anything that I can do easily, anybody can do. All right, we'll tighten that down. Then we bring this back up. Make sure we've got our washer across the top. Tighten it up. And then a simple drop. And we're in the water. Now I've got the telescope and handle here. We can loosen that up. Go in here. Bring that out. Give me a little extra distance while I'm driving and I'm able to pan around and look. But this, I've got it set up. My transducer is facing straight off the bow. I know that that is going to be going straight off the port. There's starboard. And that is aft. So panning around, and I'm going to show you some views on the screen here in just All a right, minute. We'll go we may hook well. up while I'm doing this, but I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Spreading your chum out. You know, you can sit here and go one by one and throw them out there, sling them. Um, a lot of different things will happen. Let me tell you first and foremost. A mullet pin does not feel good in your hand. So what I do, I'm going to go ahead and load the old uh, chum cannon over here. Get it loaded up. I, I don't like to throw a ton. Honestly, we don't have to today. Um, we're at the prime. And I'll tell you, this is another thing that goes on here every year. It'll start early August. You can do it. You've got to be real patient and hope you can find enough mullet. But we've got the mullet run going on along the beach. And right now is when it gets on. All right, so I'm going to get Tony to kind of film out. I'm going to throw, I'm going to spread it out. And we're going to see how quick we can get a fish on them. So just keep watching it. Let's keep watching it. Let's see what happens here. See if we get one busted on it right off the bat. 
I see one bait swimming back here real quick. Um, come on. Come on. Play for the camera. Play for the camera. But like I said, you know, it's really key that you keep that bait on top. Tony's bait is swimming really good. My bait's swimming really good. And I'm going to give you another great tip. This is the best tip I'll give you other than making sure your bait's always on top. Put the rod in the rod holder. Your instincts, your instincts are going to be to jerk that rod. Yeah, there's one feeding back. Oh, that went mine. I just missed him. Hang on. Let's see. He's coming back. He's on it. Your instincts are to jerk back and set the hook. These drags are set really, really light, and these little tiny number six trebles are gonna do the business if you let the fish do it. So we let them go, let them hit, and then pick the rod up and go. All right, maybe we'll get a fish on here in a minute. Don't go anywhere. Hey, a uh, lot of great action here at Paradise Reef. I want y'all to come do this. Y'all come out here and do this. There we go, all right, I finally got hooked up. This feels like another great macro bait size. And that's, you know, somewhere in that 16 to 18, 19 inch range is what we like. Um, and he may be bigger. A lot of times you don't find out until he gets right here. Oh no, he's perfect. He is perfect king bait right here, brother. Perfect king bait. Oh man, I tell you what, I love, oh, oh, oh. Hey, and that is the reason why Make sure that no one is standing right beside you when you get that fish to the boat and don't try to lift the fish's head out of the water. Exactly what I did. Tony is hooked up to a big one. Got the drone in the air right there. Stay out the way, bird. I was down. This is a big fish. To reading the right and on the spool. Could you really? Yeah. Come on. At least let me see you. Know if it's a king or a spaniel. If it's a Spanish, it's a big one, dude. We've caught several. This is the first one he's had spooling yet. I may have to drop the camera real quick. All right, slide forward just a hair. I'm coming right there. The camera's filming. Wow, dude. Look at that Spanish. You see the size of that Spanish? Uh -huh. Please don't be a king. I don't think it's a king. I saw too many colors. This thing is huge, y'all. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god. Dude, he's gonna, gonna make another run. I know he is. Should I get the gas? Huh? God, he, he ain't that big. What? He ain't that big. What? Look at the size of that Spanish, dude. He'll take the new lead. Dude, he'll take the new lead. He's bigger than the one we call him the tournament. Way to go, Tony Carter. Wow. Dude, that's a monster. That is a monster. Speaking of Grand Strand Fishing Rodeo, Tony the Bassmaster has not won a single species yet. And you would think that I would, you know, have my friend out there putting him on more fish, but... We're going to get him on something now. Perfect. Hey, hook placer. That is awesome, y'all. Look at that. Look at that. That's five and a half pounds. All day long. All day long. Hot, dog, mighty. That's what it's all about. Yes. Put the drone in the air and good things happen. Hey, y'all come out. Enjoy this. It's going on for the next couple weeks. Probably the end of September will start slowing down, but you can come out and do it here. Do it at the jetties. Honestly, great time. Rising tide, the last two hours. Get out to the jetties and try it right there. Hey, Trilogy Outdoors reeling up the coast, coming at you.